You know, everybody, you can look at the rosters and know that Team USA and Team Dominican Republic are unbelievable and they're great and full of Hall of Famers and MVPs. But you look at, I watched the roster be announced for Team Japan yesterday and I'm so excited because there's a lot of names on that roster that people here in the United States just don't know about yet. And they will. Um, Sasaki, Murakami, obviously they know Shohei, but that team is really good. And there's perhaps the best pitching staff in the entire tournament. And I think the offense is going to really surprise some people uh, with the amount of talent that there is. So I'm so excited to watch Team Japan. I think Shohei should treat it like he's in spring training. So whenever he would throw in a spring training game, let him pitch in a WBC game. And I know it's not the same, and I know it's a lot more um, high-stress situations, but you can control it. Um, let's say he was going to pitch in a spring training game and throw two innings. Then let him go out there and throw two innings. And then his next start, whatever it may be, six, seven days later, let him go out and throw three innings or four innings, whatever it may be. So in my opinion, pitch him as he would pitch in a spring training game and let him ramp up for the season in that way. So I, I think why not? Yeah, you know, also for him, for him to be ready for opening day, he will have to pitch in this tournament. If he didn't pitch at all, he wouldn't be ready to pitch for the Angels because he would obviously be in spring training, pitching in games normally and ramping up for the season. So he would have to be, uh, he would have to pitch in this tournament to be ready for the Angels and to pitch on opening day. That would be, that would be awesome. I, I would love for him to pitch in that first game in the Tokyo Dome. The place would be, the place would be insane. I, I got to experience the Tokyo Dome for the first time in my life a few months ago. And it's a venue um, unlike any other. And to think that the WBC will be there, Shohei will be playing. And if he starts in the first game, that'd be, that'd be so cool. I, the one, if you were to ask me the one thing I want to see the most in this tournament, uh, it would be Shohei pitching against Mike Trout. I just, I think that would be the best against the best. And we never see it, obviously, they're teammates and with the Angels. But to see it now with them on different teams and them both with very talented teams, and it really is a possibility. Um, Mike Trout and Shohei Otani are the best players in the game of baseball. And to see them possibly face off would be uh, <laughs> that'd be so cool. Knowing knowing Shohei, I'm sure he will say that. It's this tournament's going to be about uh, Mr. Kuriyama having to tone back Shohei and listen to the Angels. With I know the Angels have given him full reign to do it how he wants, but I'm sure Mr. Kuriyama is going to have to rein him back and say, "Look, you you have a season to prepare for as well. I can't let you go out there and throw." nine shutout innings against Team USA. <laughs> yeah, I look, if I, I would probably hit Lars Newtbar leadoff. Um, the guy's a, a great talent. He's a, he's a stud and he's showing that he can, he can play at the major league level. And to have a guy like that on the team, uh, I would put him in front of Shohei just to have somebody that could possibly be on base for Shohei and then we know he's going to have protection behind him obviously Shohei is the most dangerous part in that lineup but whether it be Seiya Suzuki or Murakami I think him being in the middle there um, maybe behind Newt Bar and in front of Murakami or Suzuki would be the best spot for him but uh, I have full trust in uh, Mr. Kuriyama after getting to meet him and be around him he is a incredible human being and an incredible manager. So I'm excited to see what he does with the team. I think he's a great piece for the Japanese team and people are gonna be um, surprised to see him playing for Team Japan because a lot of people know the name obviously and he's become a, a big fan favorite in, in St. Louis. And I think you, you mentioned he's a wild card. I, I agree, but I think it's going to be, I think he's going to be huge for that team. He's a guy that can get on base at the top of the lineup and 
Uh, I don't know if he's going to lead off or if Shohei is or where they're going to put him, but he will be towards the top of the lineup. And if they can get production out of him, uh, let's say he's the leadoff guy. If they can get production out of him ahead of Shohei, and then you got Shohei coming up with a runner on base already on first or second or wherever he may be, um, that just adds the depth to the Team Japan lineup that, that they need. And uh, I, I love him. I love watching him play the game of baseball. And uh, I hope that he, uh, I hope he's, he's good for Team Japan. Um, flipping bats will be a full go for the World Baseball Classic. Um, we're gonna, we're hoping to be the place to get all your WBC news. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Interviews, uh, highlights, talking about all the games, talking about who's advancing. And I think it'll be cool on both sides because um, I do have, of, and this is so cool to see the analytics of, of the podcast, but a big, a big part of the following is people from Japan. So to have that following and to be able to have the World Baseball Classic show and to talk news, it's going to be cool to update everybody in the U.S. what's going on on the other side of the world in those brackets and to update everybody on the other side of the world what's going on on this side in the brackets and how everybody's going to match up. So uh, it's going to be really cool and something that I take a lot of pride in is, uh, is showcasing this tournament the right way and being a place where everybody can listen and understand what's going on on all sides of the globe.